We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing right, Jared. How are you doing today? Doing good. Uh, we're doing two episodes this week. Um, everyone gave us gave us a bunch of Ask is, Sloopcast is, questions. Is is this fall season already? No, I just I told everyone <laughs> in the Discord because we had some good questions in there, but I knew we were going to be super busy doing uh, the the Monday episode. So I said, hey, if you guys throw some more good questions in there, we'll do a dedicated Ask Sloopcast episode. And they did. So uh, we're fulfilling a promise. All right. Let us let's go into the Ask Sloopcast here. Let me scroll up because we've we haven't we haven't done this in a hot minute. Right? Uh, they should all be pinned, I believe. <laughs> if you look at the pinned messages. Yes. Yep. Um, I don't know if I want to go that old. Uh, let us go here. <laughs> I may not have old, I may have not have unpinned some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this this is especially true after um after Saturday or Sunday nights when uh Austin asks, "Hey, uh was Holtman the problem?" I'm not going to say that um, this team always tended to pull off some wins at the very beginning of the season and the very end of the season. That's, that's a very Holtman thing to do. Um, now th don't get me wrong. Gene made the correct move in letting Holtman go. Kyle and I have advocated for that for a couple seasons now. Um, Jake Diebler is the Brian Hartline of basketball. Well, if this were John Diebler, we could have that conversation, but it's, it's Jake. Um, it's Jake Diebler. Um, and also like, let's, Hey, great win against Michigan state. Um, yeah, but win. let's, let's not, great, let's great not point. get, let's not get excited. We still need to go get a, an experienced college basketball head coach and, and, bring someone in here to revitalize the program with all due respect to Jake Diebler. I hope he stays on staff. I want him here. Um, but let's, let's go get an experienced college basketball coach to come in here mm -hmm. and revitalize Ohio state basketball. All right. Got another question here with updated early signing news. Could we see kids foregoing their senior seasons to red shirt? Foregoing their senior seasons to red shirt. I don't understand that question. Wait, did they, you mean high school senior seasons? Oh yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to guess that's what he means here. Could we see kids foregoing their senior seasons to I, red shirt? He means high school senior. Uh, cause I think one of the proposals was like a very early, like a July, so like a pre before the season, early signing period. Like not only do we have an early signing period in early December, but also one that would come before the season even started. So could they, cause like we've kind of seen this where a player will yeah. reclassify, reclassify. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the answer to that question is, we're all right. We've already seen it. Mm. That, that the, That's the answer to the question. We've already seen it. It's just, they wouldn't be reclassifying in this case. They'd just be signing even earlier, I guess. Mm -hmm. So right. yes, um, yes, we could see that. Yet. Kabuto asks us how much money would it take Jared and Kyle to sell the rights to the Sloopcast IP, including the pod, the Patreon, and the Discord server. How how much you got? <laughs> Listen, we don't do this for the money. Our Patreon money's public. It's is not much. Um it would what it would what it would cost is a lot more than it's worth. I'll tell you that much. Because <laughs> it's not worth that much. A hundred million, yeah, we're done here. Yeah. Yep. Goodbye, guys. Yeah, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs>
we'll become a Patreon now. Yeah. <laughs> For Kyle only, then I'd have to say no. Um, actually, um, in, the, in all of- honesty, I, I would still I would say yes to that just because I like Kyle. And I'd be like, sure, Kyle can have $100 million. He'll slip me some. He's a nice guy. <laughs> And then Zach says, uh, as a follow-up, if Fox offered you a contract which would give you Gus and Joel as a recruiting guest host spot, would you take it? Recruiting or recurring? Re- oh, no, you're right. Recurring guest Yeah, host neither of them are spots. recruiting guys. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yes. I mean, well, wait a minute. so what's what's the, like... We'd be affiliated with Fox Sports and we'd get access we'd to be... Gus and Joel. Like, why would we say no to that? With all due respect to Buckeye yeah. Huddle, who we love and we love being a part of the Buckeye Huddle network, like Fox Sports would actually pay us, probably. <laughs> not to say the Buckeye Huddle should pay us. That's not what I'm saying. We have our we have our deal and we're happy with it. Uh, but like. Buckeye Huddle doesn't like pay us a salary to do this and nor should they don't get me, you know, I'm not suggesting otherwise. Um, but if we'd be working for Fox sports, they'd actually probably like pay us per episode. They'd also give us an enormous platform. I mean, yeah. Why would we not do that? Did, did he say we have to sell the rights to do that? Like would they own not, Sloopcast? Not. He didn't say it. Um, Cause Zach's, it sounds Zach's, what, what was that? Zach, Zach's in the chat here. Maybe he can reply, but he said as a follow-up to Kabuto's about, oh, okay. About selling the rights. Okay. So in this scenario, we have to, uh, give up the intellectual property yeah. of the sloop cast. Well, again, like at that point, yeah. it just comes down to money. Like we, we did a yeah, spot yeah. for bleacher report last year. Um, they paid us to do an episode on their platform and we did it and it was fun. But if you're going to ask me to six years, 25 million. Yes, Mm -hmm. of course. That's more money than I would make in the rest of my life. Easy. We, we would have to, I mean, I'd get to quit my day job. And just do the podcast at that point. Sell out. Yeah, 100%. 100% a sell. And not only that, I would talk about exactly what they wanted me to talk about for that amount of money. I would give up all of my yeah. integrity for $25 million. All of my integrity gone. Right. You you want clickbait? Yeah. I'll give you clickbait. You want bullshit topics that don't matter? You want me to stir up drama and be a total dickhead? Yeah, I'll do it. My soul's worth 25 mil. Oh, wait a minute. Kyle gets half of that. Uh, I've not, not that I, I don't, not that I've watched RJ Young much before or after, but I I don't think his content has changed much. Again, I'm not, I didn't watch him a ton before, but I did watch him some before and I didn't watch him a ton after, but I have watched him some after. I don't think, I don't, I don't yeah. think he's changed to, to his absolute credit. All right. No, we got another question here. This is from is a Chapa. If Netflix could make one documentary on any, on one of any Ohio state game ever, which would you choose and why? A lot, lot, of, lot of great games you can choose from. You could choose that. You can choose that 2006 number one versus number two matchup of of the game. Eh. That's, I think. I think that. I think that's up there. Um, you could choose maybe the um, uh, the what is that the 2000 and um, what was it 2000 and uh, was that 16 was it or 17 with the um with the walk off with the walk off victory what which year was that i'm not sure what you're referring to Kyle the um 
You've only mentioned the, the double year so over, far. The double, the double overtime game. Oh, Ohio State and Michigan. The Curtis Samuel touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on which year that year that was. I think that's another one you could put as well. Mm. Uh, but if it was me, you know, just because of just because it, the first year of the playoffs and uh-huh. finally getting that hump over the hump over over the oh, Ohio State can never beat an SEC team, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's the Ohio State versus Alabama game. Yeah, it's probably it's probably that game. And everyone would be like, oh, but that wasn't the, the, the national title game was Oregon. OK, and the miracle on ice was also the semifinal. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ohio, or Ohio State. The uh, USA then had to turn around and beat. Was it Iceland? I don't remember. See, that no. I don't remember is the point. The point is I we beat Russia, but only thing that got us. But Finland, Spike says, Finland, uh, Spike's knows it was Finland. And Finland was also really good. Was Russia better? Sure. But the documentary is not about Finland now, is it? It's about the miracle on ice. It's about beating Russia. Um, and I know this isn't the question because the question was, Rocky four and shit. Yeah, exactly. Spikes. <laughs> this isn't, I know the question is which singular game, but to me, that entire four game stretch at the end would actually make an amazing documentary. Um, you have the drama of losing a quarterback of a new quarterback coming in. Um, Urban Meyer's fresh in the locker room. So you have that storyline. Um, I don't, I almost don't want to say this cause I don't want to trivialize this as like a storyline, but it is a thing that happened. Costa care. George goes missing. And then he's, uh, you know, I, unfortunately took his own life and that's horrible. And I don't want to, I don't want to trivialize that as just like a storyline in a documentary. Don't please don't mistake me on that. But like that, that four game stretch is rich in storyline. Um, even if you don't talk about Costa care, George, um, it's, Again, it's it's rich in storyline. You lose your starting quarterback. You beat Michigan. Urban Myers, you know, for the sake of the documentary, you kind of imply that it's his first year there just because it makes a better story. Um, you know, and if you did the entire season, you even have the fall to Virginia Tech, which adds like a whole other thing. This team sucks. Oh, my God. They're barely beating teams in September. This team's terrible. And then the rise, because that's what makes the good story. Like every hero journey has a death and a redemption. And, you know, a death and a resurrection as like every hero's journey, right? It's, it's the real, it's the hero's journey shit. I think the big yeah. 10 network owns the rights to that story. I, I'm sure they do. Uh, he said Netflix documentary. This would be on the big yeah. 10 network. I'm sure. Um, yeah. So although so the playoff game games happened on ESPN, so maybe it's a 30 for 30 in conjunction with the big 10. So would that be your, your, um, your game then as well? I mean, I cheated and, and picked like four games that happened concurrently, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's the storyline. In my opinion, that's the storyline. Um, mm-hmm. this is going to be a shorter I mean, episode. We- I mean, I mean, you could, you could also, you could also, yeah, you could also say, I mean, I mean, a lot of us don't really think too much about the, uh, the 2002 or January 2003, January 2003. Sure. Ohio State, Ohio State versus Miami when, when no one gave Ohio State a chance. No one did. See, and that, that one is like some miracle on ice stuff there, right? Miami is yes. Russia and my, 
my question, and again, if you did the entire season, because that entire season that whole, hung on a string. Whole season was stressful. <laughs> but does anyone outside of Ohio State care that much? Because I think objectively 2014 is a good storyline. And I think 2002 yeah, so is a good storyline if you're an Ohio State fan. And and I think that's the difference, in my opinion. Um, that's the difference. I, I think 2014 is objectively the good storyline, even if you're not an Ohio State fan. Mm-hmm. All right, moving uh, on here, we have... Well, Kyle, real quick, this is going to be a short episode, so I'm going to do an ad break right about here. Um, okay. If you want to avoid these ad breaks, uh, go ahead and join our Patreon, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Get early access to episodes. Uh, you get premium access to the Discord server, and maybe most importantly, you don't get these annoying Spreaker ads. So uh, avoid the ads that are starting now. Okay, Kyle. Uh, what else do we have in the mailbag? Nick Z Spikes says here, what is your all-time favorite Ohio State game that wasn't a bowl game, playoff game, conference title game, or a T-ton game? Ooh. Ooh. That's a lot of... Oh, Spikes had this one ready to go. For instance, one of my favorite... He, he writes in the chat right now. For instance, one of my favorite regular season games was 2001 night game against Northwestern. Um, one of my first night games in the Trestle era, we were unranked and they were ranked 14th. The atmosphere in the shoe was nuts. We stomped them and it truly felt like sleeping Ohio State giant had awakened. Yeah, I mean, that's and that was. Uh, Trestle's first year, as you alluded to, Um it helps as far as it just being, you know, it's very irregularly is a singular game. All that important in the grand scheme of the history of a program, especially since you removed postseason games and games against Michigan. Um, it, it's hard to find a game with great significance once you remove all those, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so if we're looking for games with great significance, the Holy Buckeye play and game against Purdue, uh, comes mm -hmm. to mind. Um, weirdly, Virginia Tech in 2014, if we don't lose that game, we don't win the national title. As weird as that is to say, I don't think we win the national title if we don't lose that game. Zeke's run straight to the heart of the South. He said no playoff games. He said no postseason games. I mean, that... Well, yeah. if, you, if you want to do a... Going through the heart of a defense, I'm, I'm going to go way back. Way back, Jared. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? 29 years ago. I think you're thinking what I'm years thinking. Ago. I think you're thinking what I'm thinking. Oh, uh, so you're going Eddie George against Notre Dame. Wasn't didn't he run wasn't Michigan State his big game that year though? Eddie George. Illinois, thank oh, you. Spikes. It was Illinois. Yeah. Illinois. Yeah. It's it's not it's not as fun cuz it's Illinois and beating Notre Illinois Dame. Illinois was not not was they it were, Illinois good that year though? I mean by Illinois standards, they were good. I if I'm thinking correctly. And maybe they weren't even. But like it's still it's still like not good, good, but it's Illinois good, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I think that's so it's like, you know, historical games are are good when you set records or when you beat a team that you don't get to play too often. Um, yeah, it's always fun. 
Uh, let's see. What other like non postseason, non Michigan games? Uh, I, I, I'm struggling, Kyle. I'm struggling to think of more. JT Barrett come back against Penn State is a good one. Um, oh, crap. Who was it against? Was it Indiana when um, Kenny G had to come in, middle of a snowstorm, lead the team back? What season was that? And what am I thinking of? Uh, Purdue. That was. It was that was that one was Purdue. That's mm-hmm. a good game. Yeah, I, I'm. It's a, it's a great question. I wish I had put some thought into it before we recorded. Um. I mean, there are there are obviously some very good answers. The IU game was fifty two forty nine. Yeah. Uh, we beat Texas in Texas. That's actually a good one too. What was that? 2006 was that? That was that. That was a good one. Yes, I, I remember. I remember my dad talking about that for a long time. Yeah, that that's a good one. Um, yeah, there there are definitely some good ones. Um, a lot of them are going to be games where you set records, um, games where you got to beat a team that you don't get to play too often. Uh, those are all, those will always be important. Comebacks are always fun. Would that have been baby Colt? Oh yeah, it would have been. Cause they, they, they that beat was, us. Yes. Then they won the national title. Then we beat, beat them back the next year. Is that how that played yeah, out? So, so I think that was 2007 then. Because they, they beat us with, because Vince Young was just unstoppable that year. Uh, they beat us here. In, in 2005. And then we beat them in 2006 then. Yeah. And we, we had that game for a minute. Yeah, it was 25-22 was the uh was the final score and Texas scored 9 points. Um well they scored yeah, they scored um we had some quarterback issues that game if I'm remembering correctly. That's right. Uh so they sc- they scored they s- they scored a touchdown with two and a half minutes left. Ohio State took a safety. Yeah. Took a safety to try to get an onside kick and that didn't, that didn't uh, succeed. That was Troy Smith's first game due to suspension, but he wasn't yet, yeah, but he was also splitting time with Zwick. That, that was the thing. Yes. Um, yeah, it was, I feel like bad. we feel like we could have won that game if Troy Smith was the only quarterback playing, but who knows, but who knows? Yeah. You never know. Um, cause again, Vince Young was incredible that year. So it's hard to tell, uh, Kyle, do we have any additional questions or do you have any additional uh, games you want to bring up? Uh, I think, I think those were, those were some of the good ones I could think of there. Um, let's, let's go through a couple more questions here. What is your favorite social screen game we've watched the last couple of years? Ooh, favorite socials. So we don't watch Ohio State games too often. And I know he's not specifically saying Ohio State. Oh, um, I, I, the we we did watch the uh Utah uh Ohio State Rose Bowl where uh CJ Stroud just went absolutely crazy. We got our first glimpses of Marvin Harrison Jr. as a freshman. Um and then, of course, um, yeah, that was a, and it was just an absolutely. That, that might be. I that's the first one that comes to mind. 
a lot of times when we're watching social screen games, we're watching a bunch of different games. Yeah, Jackson Smith and Jim uh, and Jigba, of course, had an enormous game that game. Mm-hmm. CJ Stroud, Marvin Harrison Jr. had an enormous game that game. He had two touchdowns in his first ever start. So it was a real passing of the torch moment. You know, we didn't know that was going to be our last look at Jackson Smith and Jigba because he basically didn't get to play at all the next year. But it was basically our last look at him. Um, Notre Dame was pretty crazy. We decided to watch some action just to calm down. Yeah, I remember that. (laughs) Social screens are like, I, you know, I know I already plugged the Patreon once. And, you know, one of the best reasons to join is every Saturday we watch one of the, you know, there's like three main windows of college football, your afternoon, your midday and your evening games. We pick one of those windows every week and we watch, you know, a game or sometimes multiple games together. Um, I think that is probably one of the best benefits that I I think is probably one of the best benefits of being a patron is those, those sessions. It is pretty fun. Mm -hmm. Spike says, I I think because like those don't get recorded. Those only exist in that moment. Um, Of course, you know, being a patron, you get to be, you know, you spikes and Zach are in here talking right now and you get voice privilege. Yeah. That's why we don't record them because everyone's talking and sometimes people say some shit. That's why we don't record those. (laughs) Um, Yep. um, Yeah. It's. I, cause like you get early access to episodes if you're a patron, but everyone gets the episodes and, but the, but the social screens are like literally just for us and they don't exist anywhere outside of that moment. We did, uh, we did to a social, we did do a social screen episode. I don't think I, 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 we, we did do that, but we did it as a, um, we did record an ask sloop or a uh, social screen, but we only, I posted that only, that was a Patreon exclusive. That wasn't posted to the general public. Uh, that was a sloop cats only. And it wasn't, it wasn't even a football game. Was it? It wasn't that like a basketball game. But yeah, I, I did record one of them, but I didn't release it publicly. It only went to the patron or Patreon. Yeah. Um, so last again, only here. existed for the patrons. Last question here. Uh, will Netflix acquisition of Monday Night Raw starting next year make wrestling great again? No, um, it, it will not. Um, I haven't watched wrestling since 2020. Um, Bray Wyatt has unfortunately passed away and he was kind of my guy. Undertaker's retired. I have no interest in going back to wrestling. Um, when it comes to, When it comes to, you, you know what the biggest thing is with, they don't have to worry about ratings anymore on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And as much fun as it had, as it kind of was to not have to do pay-per-view anymore because all of the, all of the pay-per-view stuff went to the WD, WWE channel. And then after that, all of, and then it eventually went to uh, Peacock. But when they stopped having to sell a pay per view, the pay per view started to suck. When they didn't have to encourage people to actually pay for them, the pay per view started to suck. Um, and I think one of the benefits of moving raw to Netflix is they, the, the ratings are no longer public because Netflix doesn't release numbers. And I wonder, is there still going to be motivation to make it 
good because I it hasn't been listen if if the wwe gets better it won't be because of netflix and it it'll just be because vince mcmahon is officially out of the picture that that's the only thing that'll make it good gotcha that that's it vince mcmahon yeah it's maybe if they're not chasing ratings they can sort of start doing some long term storytelling again which is not a thing that they've done with any quality in a very long time um i don't know it, it became a product that was hard to support after a while for many reasons uh, vince mcmahon being one of those big reasons but also just like Eh. Like, I don't know. It was just. I, I'm not, I'm not going to wax poetic about the WWE. No one cares. Um, no one cares. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. No, no one that, cares about my opinions is, on that. That's all the questions that we, or, or yeah, that's all the, that's all that we have for the, uh, yeah. For the ask Snoopcast questions there. All right. Um, yeah, I think that was that was a that was a good episode. We haven't done like a straight up ask Sloopcast in a minute. So that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing that. Um Yeah, I think that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um in a year, I think. No. No way. Yeah, no way that's done, true. We've done we've done a more recent. Way more recent. No way that's true. Definitely no way not, we not in a hot minute, but no way we went all the way through the wasteland without doing an Ask Sloopcast episode. That's 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 not possible. That's not possible. All right. Uh that's it. That's the end of the episode. Um Kyle, you look like you were gonna say something. No? Um no. No, I'm gonna let you do your thing. Well, okay. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um yeah, it's more related to about what you what you're wearing, Jared. Ah, yes. Columbus Crew. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas. Christmas came and start off the season as um with a with a win. The win with a yeah. With a win to start their season here. It's over a, Atlanta? Over Atlanta. It, I don't I don't expect Atlanta to be all that good this year. Could have been two, could have been three, nothing, but it's First game, when's, when's, you, you get you get the th- you get you get the three point you get the three points you get the three points. That, listen, that's what matters. Listen, burn Atlanta every, to the ground. Yeah, exactly. Every once in a while, someone okay. from Ohio <laughs> burns Atlanta to the ground, and that's always a cause for celebration. We're we're yeah. Team Sherman oh, got, in this Discord server where, in this where, podcast. Where's it? Where's it at? Here. Uh I don't know if you saw it, Jared. I want to copy the picture, copy image. Here we go. Let's put that into the live chat here. I don't know if you saw saw this, Jared. It was really, really well done as soon as Discord decides to show it. There we go. Very wow. well. Very well done. Yeah. Run it back. Yep. Impossible is an opinion. Impossible is it. Let's run it back. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we can do it again. The original, the original black and gold. <laughs> huh? I mean, because, because the whole LA is saying, oh, we're the black and gold and the crew's like, we're the original black and gold team. Uh, I mean, the Steelers might have something to say about that as my, well, of, my of, of, of MLS. Okay. Okay. Actually, of course, the pirates, the pirates are even older than the Steelers. So the pirates might have something to say about that. Yeah. All right, that's it. That is it. Gotta, gotta give a shout out to the, to the Columbus crew, the, uh, the three time MLS champs. Soon to be four. Uh, the pirates do suck. That's, that's a, that's a factual statement. That doesn't change the fact that they've, 
I'm going to go ahead and say they're the first uh, team in the United States to wear black and gold. Do I know that's true? No, I don't. Am I going to say it anyway? Yes, I am. That the Pittsburgh Pirates were the first black and gold team in the entire United States. Someone, someone tell me I'm wrong and I may or may not listen. I don't care. So with all that being said, I'd like to, oh, wait a minute, music, uh, Heart Attack Man. We ended Monday's episode with some Heart Attack Man. We'll do some more Heart Attack Man on this episode. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters, once again, Heart Attack Man.